the proof is in the pudding. If you create great results for those people, they'll produce more results for you and continue to bring you referrals. Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Fairley. How do I start the tribe? What can I do? What's the next thing I can do? Most unselfish thing a person could do is expand. No other option besides hard work. How they can live this three-dimensional lifestyle. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Podcast. This is the Q&A edition. I'm actually live inside of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Facebook group. So if you have not gone over there and joined us in the group, you're going to want to go do that. I'm going live and they're asking questions. We're doing open coaching. We're doing Q&A. As people know that over the last few years, we've been able to impact hundreds of thousands and reach millions of men all over the world and see them prosper in health, wealth, and relationships, the three core dimensions of the three-dimensional businessman. And I'm excited to talk about those things here today. Also, we're over 95 star reviews, the very beginning of the podcast launch. Even though we had a winter storm that literally knocked us out, I couldn't even promote the podcast for the first few days. I had no running water. My power was on and off. It was absolutely insane. So thank you guys. Yet if you have not gone over to iTunes and subscribed, rated and review, type in the Billion Dollar Brotherhood. Make sure to go check it out. You're going to want to go see it and leave us that five-star rate and review. It helps a ton. Now, if you want to see my beautiful face or if you just want to see some epic quality cameras and amazing interviews, amazing trainings, etc., head over to YouTube. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and there's this little tiny bell. That bell is so, so, so important because throughout the day, you may be thinking, man, I'm down. I need some energy. I need some excitement. It's going to give you notification when we drop a new episode. Actually, one of our coaching guys and our, our head coaches and our top salespeople, uh, Angel, we got on a call today. It was super cool because he was wanting to, to just help more people, right? And when we got on this call, the way that I was talking and going through a few things, he was listening to my voice and hearing these things. He's like, man, I wish I would have had this a few days ago. He felt like he was in this slump, like he didn't have this urgency and this scarcity and this, this ability of wanting to go out there and achieve. And through just listening to what I was presenting, he all of a sudden felt this motivation. He actually went out there and helped another brother get inside the BDB club. And that's just one of our sales guys. Now, imagine that duplicated over and over again. And that was just literally today, within a few hours, that when you get that notification, a new episode drop, and you get that inspiration, that feeling of feeling unstoppable inside of you, that renewal, where you feel like you get called out, but you feel empowered afterwards, that's what happens when we drop a new episode. So you're gonna wanna subscribe, not just for us, even though it's helpful, yet for you as well. So let's get into some q and A. I I want to feature some of the guys that are inside of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Facebook group. Uh, number one is Benjamin Record. He says, how would you go about trying to grow a web design? And by the way, I don't look at any of these beforehand. None of these things are pre-recorded. None of these things are pre-read. I legitimately have never finished any of these sentences before. And so that's why it's open coaching. It's legitimately live. So with that, uh, Benjamin Record, I appreciate the question, man. Shout out to him. He's inside of our BDB club. He says, how would you go about trying to grow a web design, custom development, and digital marketing agency in 2021? Established clients, uh, primed for growth, ready to make a push this year for larger clients and bigger projects. So uh, Benjamin, I appreciate the question. Just clarify it. He wants to know how you can grow a web design, digital marketing agency in 2021. It's a great question because it might've been different in 2019. And even going into 2020 might have been a little bit different as well. And with established clients primed for growth and ready to make a push for this year for larger clients. So uh, one of the first things that I, that I want to talk about when it comes to this question of, of launching this business in 2021, I believe it's a great question because what I love about the business is many times people go out there and they have this desire. They have this, this passion that they want to do as a business. And one of the first things that I did in business was really figure out one of two things. There's so many different things going through my mind. One of the things that I love that my mentor Russell talks about is he talks about there's some people out there that have a level 10 skill set. So let's talk about over here, you have a skill set. You're really good at something and you rate yourself one to 10. So how good are you at the activity or the knowledge base of what you're talking about? Do you have a great skill set and ability to sell, ability to market? And then on this side, you have opportunity which is the business model. What's the level of the opportunity? And sometimes what you'll find is you'll find many people out there that have maybe a 10 out of 10 skill set. They're so talented, yet their opportunity is a one out of 10. So because of that, the business never grows. And you have other people, which is kind of scary on this side, a 10 out of 10 opportunity, phenomenal product, 
catches fire and the person has a one out of 10 skill set. So because of that, the business kind of burns down or as soon as the business is gone, the what ends up happening is that this person needs the opportunity to create success. So the goal is to obviously couple up a level 10 skill set with the level 10 opportunity so that we can create the most amount of traction. So with that, I don't want to get too stuck inside of a commodity when it comes to digital marketing in 2021. But one of the things that, that I love about it is that it's a tangible service. It has an outcome. It's something that people are already in the market for. So the next step is when I look at getting into a new business or creating a new product, typically what I want to do is I want to see if there's a market for it already. Meaning that I don't want to create or bring people into that market. I want big companies to do that. There's step phase number one is educating the market, getting them to believe that something is valuable. This had to happen with cars, right? The first car that came out wasn't the, wasn't Ford. That wasn't the first car ever built. There was a, a process of educating people that horses were not the future, that cars were the future. That took a lot of money, energy, and time. And then all of a sudden, when the when the market was educated, then all of a sudden we can roll out all these cars and they're like already in the market to buy them because they're like, I'm looking for a car. I'm looking for a car. I want a car. I need a car. So with that, digital marketing. Are people looking for digital marketing companies? Yes, they are. There's a market cap for that, meaning there's a certain amount of money that people are investing to either do it on their own, to figure out on their own, to hire other companies. That's the market cap. That's what in the book, Red Ocean, Blue Ocean, we call the Red Ocean. This is where everyone's fighting and there's all these people spending money. So going into marketing to these people and growing the business, what I love about this is that there's already people spending money. So the last thing you want to do is get people that have never hired, never invested in marketing before, never invested in digital marketing or web design. You don't want to educate them and convince them to start buying. The goal really is to go and market to one of these three different categories. Number one is you have people out there that are called diehards. Diehards are people that legitimately no matter what, if they're with a different digital marketing company or they're with a 55-year-old web design company that wears hula shirts and they take the weekends off and it's $500 every time they have an edit, if they love those people, they'll legitimately never leave them. They're diehards. You look at someone like Russell Brunson with ClickFunnels, they all wear the shirts. They're diehards. If there was a better software, a better landing page builder, a lot of them would not leave better CRM, et cetera, a lot of them would not leave. Why? Because they're diehards. They love Russell. They love the brand so much they would never leave. So the last thing you want to do is be like, go to those people and say, oh man, WordPress is the deal, bro. Like you need WordPress. Oh, you need Kajabi, man. You need Kajabi. So that's the last thing we want to do. So what's the next phase then? The next phase is the, the, my favorite type of people to market to which are people that are already using web design companies, already using funnel builders, already using digital marketing to some degree. Maybe they're doing it on their own. Maybe they've hired a different company. Maybe they bought a course, et cetera, except they're having a terrible experience. Side tangent for that real quick is that if you were to make a product on Amazon and try to compete against all these other products or put a product up on Amazon, Generally, one of the hacks that people are using right now is they go through all the top sellers and they look at all the one-star reviews and they figure out all the things that people are hating about the product and they fix that in their product when they launch it. Why do they do this? Because there's people that are already buying this stuff that hate it. They're like, man, I just, I hate that there's this about it. The customer service sucked or the warranty sucked or when it came, the box was jacked up and they can then take that, sell the same product, but say, our war we have lifetime warranty, we have the best customer support, whatever that is. So now that those people that already fork over their money, they're like, well, I'm already buying this thing. So now I could go give them my money, but it doesn't cost me anymore. And now you're getting them to pay you, but it's you're not actually getting them to spend money that they don't have value for. They're just taking it and investing it with people that they love more than ever. So that that's how I look at it first off when it comes to market. When it comes to actually marketing, this is a very easy commodity. The way that I would start doing it right away is one, I'd build a network of people that need websites and digital marketing. That's number one. I'd start cultivating that community and group, maybe create a Facebook group like I have here, giving tips and tricks and helping people for free, creating case studies for free. I would then take a handful, maybe 10 people that you do a beta test for. I would take the web design or the digital marketing 
and I would legitimately do it 100% for free just to create the case study. If you've not created the case study yet, I would take the case study and use it as ammunition to be able to go out there and get clients. I would take the different industries that you want to specialize in and I'd focus in, I'd niche down on those industries, create results for those industries and start sharing them. Take the case study and you could use it as ammunition against other people in the marketplace. Now, again, I would go after people that are already in the market for searching for web design, searching for funnels, searching for digital marketing. And that way that you can pounce on that first. The next phase that I think is underutilized is an audit. I remember a great friend of mine that actually had his life transformed inside of our elite program. He went from being in the military to creating a multi-million dollar company. He actually helped me out with my Facebook ads at one point. And the way he got me was that he went and audited all my stuff. He went through my landing pages. He went through all my pixels. He went through everything. He screen recorded it and he actually put it up on YouTube. It was really interesting because I watched the audit on YouTube. But then I started going down this rabbit hole because he had all these different type of niches like roofers. And I could go and watch all their videos. How, how cool is that? That if I'm a roofer and I go on there, I can watch all these audits he's done for other people and start getting ideas of what he could do for me. And all of a sudden I was like, man, like this guy has the landing page, the targeting, all, everything set up, ready to go for me. And he's seen my weaknesses. He's seen that I, that I don't have the pixels in place. He can see that I don't currently run the ads. He could see that I'm not spending enough money. He could see all these issues and he's bringing the solution. Now with that, the only reason why people will not buy from you is for a few different reasons. They don't know you, they don't like you, and they don't trust you. Those are three reasons. So you'll, you'll have to overcome that. You're gonna wanna overcome that through building the rapport through the content, being real with them, not just nice to them when, the, when you're producing the content or when you're doing the audit or the free strategy call and building that rapport with people because at the end of the day, the reason they have not hired other companies and they're coming to you is because they don't trust other companies. They've been wronged by other companies before. They probably bought from other people and it didn't work. They've spent money on their own and it did not work. So your goal is to be real with them and figure out how do you overcome those objections before they even come up and build that rapport so that really at the end of the day, you have the case studies. You could show them, hey, this is exactly what we did with other people. Let's do it for you. I create a risk reversal meaning I'd create either guarantees or something that happens that puts the risk on you. Uh, this is like the best thing that you can do inside of a service-based business like this is take all the risk. Think about carpet cleaning, where I came from, service-based business. Hey, if, if your spot doesn't come out, we'll literally come back over and over again until you're satisfied. So at that point, it's like you're either satisfied or you're satisfied. Is that satisfying for you? Because you want your carpet clean. Like, oh yeah, like as long as it's going to for sure come out or you're going to do whatever it takes, then I'm fine with it. So find out what is going to be your unique selling proposition or your risk reversal, the thing that you're going to do to take away the risk. An example of that real quick is Jay Abraham. He used to hold live events back in the day. He did $250 million, $250,000 in spend. And he would hold these live events for 5K, 10K. Yeah, one of the things he did for risk reversal is he would say, hey, Nicholas, you want to come to this event? We're going to be teaching on these things. I already know that you said you wanted to go. Yeah, I just want to take on all the risk. Meaning that if you come to the event, the first day, if you don't think it was totally worth all your money, I'm going to have a check on the back table, your check, that I will not deposit until you leave it there after the first day. But you can't come back the second day if you take that check home with you. But if you don't think it was worth just that one day was worth that check, then take your check, cash it back in your account, rip it up, and you didn't even invest a dime with us. Talk about risk reversal. Our live events, BDB Live, we have an end of event money back guarantee. They just go to the sessions at the very end. If they don't like it, they can have all their money back, meaning they consume all of it and I'm taking on all the risk. Either they like it or they got to eat all my food, watch all these speakers, make me pay for everything, and then they get all their money back. Risk reversal. So that's why I get my foot in the door. Uh, we did this with obviously our YouTube post-production and podcast post-production company. That's service-based as well as the partners we've had with Funnel Building is really cool and a lot of times when it comes down to it i just show the results i'm gonna have like i'm showing them the experts that are working on their stuff i'm showing them the case studies of what we've done before i'm building the reports so they know like and trust me and i'm getting them started right there because they're looking for it right now and then the proof is in the pudding if you create great results for those people they'll produce more results for you and continue to bring you referrals so thanks for the question benjamin that was freaking awesome that definitely got my wheels turning for sure Facebook user, that's what it says, says, hey, Nick, 
just what steps you would take in case you wanted to build your business from scratch if you started 2021 with nothing, just with the knowledge you have acquired so far. So what steps would I take if I was starting over in business from scratch in 2021 with nothing, just the knowledge you've acquired so far? This is a really good question. And I believe that one of the coolest things from this is that anyone can do this. Because like you said, the knowledge base I still have, but I don't have any of the connections and no one knows who I am. I'm stripped naked and left in the desert. And I actually did a whole training on this one time that was uh, how you can grow your business. Even if you're stripped naked and left in the desert, think about Bill Gates or Warren Buffett, whatever one is less controversial to you. Think about them for a second. If you were to take everything away from them, strip them naked, leave them in the desert, no one knows who they are, would they be successful again? If the answer is yes, I agree with you. They would be successful again. Why? Because of their knowledge base. They know how to do it. See, if you give someone the lottery ticket and they win a billion dollars, statistically, they're going to lose it all. And they're going to lose their mind. Even if they keep the money, they'll watch it dwindle away, which is never a good feeling. It feels good to build upon what you've created. So with that, the knowledge base can never be taken away for us. It's literally skill set knowledge base is the number one asset. Six inches guards the number one asset that you have. Greater than gold, greater than crypto, greater than real estate, greater than all of the above. Number one investment you can make is in yourself. Even Warren Buffett says that. So if I were to do it today, this is what I would do straight off the bat. Number one is I would go straight into a service that people already want. I would go into a product or service that people are already searching for, that they already want, that they already understand, that I could dominate in the marketplace. Number two is I would level up my authority through not being the expert. What do I mean by that? It's what I do here at BDB. For the last four or five years, I have not been the guy teaching until now. And still, it's not the main thing we do. Four or five years, I've been bringing in the best experts in the world. Every month in the club, every month in the elite, I bring in the best teachers and trainers in the world. On the podcast, every week, best teachers and trainers in the world. What does this do? When you bring in an authority figure that other people know, and you're there hosting that meeting and asking the questions, the audience out here automatically assumes that you guys are on the same level. And your authority and your perception of who you are is at the same level when I'm with Grant Cardone and I'm hanging out with him. Everyone else thinks, even if they don't know who I am, they don't know what I've done. They're, man, this guy must be legit because he's interviewed or he's hanging out with Grant Cardone. So the first thing that I would do is I would jump into a reporter role inside the company, meaning as I bring in all the biggest experts, I would interview them. And the way that I would get them is I would say, hey, I'm going to have all these people listening to this interview, to this training, to this webinar. And so I want to have the biggest expert, the best expert. Would you be willing to come in and teach? And they're like, sure, because they're thinking they're talking to a bunch of people. Then I would book them and I'd go get all the people to listen by leveraging their name because they don't know me. I wouldn't be like, hey, I'm Nicholas. No one knows who I am. You want to jump on my live stream about, fa about Facebook ads? No, people are like, I don't care about who you are. I don't even know who you are. But imagine if I got Nicholas Kuzmich, who used to do ads for Tony Robbins, great friend of mine. Imagine if I got him, oh, Nicholas Kuzmich, or, or even Tony Robbins. Get Tony Robbins. I say, Nicholas, hey, I'm going to have 100 people on this webinar. Uh, I would love to have you come in and teach on Facebook ads. We're, we're teaching people doing some stuff. He'd be like, oh, cool, 100 people? That sounds great. It's fun. And then I'd be like, all right, now that I got him booked, I'm going to go get 100 people because they know who he is. He's ran ads for Tony Robbins. He has a reputation. I bring them on, I allow him to do all the teaching, but I've built all the rapport. After that, I now have the audience. I've now served those 100 people. Now those are 100 people that have now become my tribe. And I've consistently built that over and over again. That's exactly how I built BDB. I built it from scratch. I built it with no following. I built it without the skill sets. I built it without any of those things into 100,000 plus dollar months, all from nothing. And so, that's exactly how I build it. And that's how I build it again in 2021. The only difference is I wouldn't do as many meetups. I would still do media meetups right now. If I were the one doing it in Austin, I'm planning on doing dinners. Imagine that. If I get one epic person that will come to a dinner, I'm going to use that one person's name to leverage everyone else to come to dinner to build that network. And then everything from there is first impressions. If you come in powerfully, be like, hey, uh, this is what I do. 
I help build high converting landing pages that generate leads for people that turn into high ticket sales. Like, oh, wow, seriously? I go, yeah. And I'd go out there and I'd create my case studies, just like I talked about in the last question. I'd have the case studies already ready. And I'd start getting in sales conversations with people with a service that uh, a level 10 opportunity, right? An opportunity that people are searching for, that people want to invest a lot for. And I'd start there and I'd build that tribe and continue to build upon it. That's what I'd start out with. Be the reporter. Don't be the guru, the person who goes out there and thinks they know it all. Don't be the reluctant hero, the guy who's like, hey, I've, done, I've accomplished so much in my life, but I feel like I have a calling to help people. Don't be that person. Don't be even the tester, the person who goes out there and just tries new things. Be the guy that brings in the authorities so that you gain the authority and then you build your tribe from that. You grow the tribe from their authority and it becomes your tribe. Cultivate that tribe and so solve the problems that they have. Once you have the tribe, you could generally start looking at what is the common things that they struggle with and then go out there and solve those problems. I did that with our post-production podcast company. When COVID hit, we had to shut down our, our physical studio that we had that was for podcast recording and video recording. Shut it down and I thought, well, instead of like firing someone, I think we could go out there and just do post-production for people that already do videos and already do audio and we'll do all the marketing material and all the stuff that I do for my company. Yeah, how did I come up with that? From a problem that I had. So man, like I, I struggled in this area. Like I struggled with recording the episodes and editing them and getting them out on time and promoting them. What if they just dropped them to me and I did all that work and then gave it back to them? That would have solved the problem for me. So I look at like, what are the common problems in the community? I figure out what's a way that I could craft an offer that would be irresistible to those people. That's what I do in 2021. I leverage other people's expertise and authority to become my expertise and authority to build a tribe over and over and over again, rinse and repeat. I'd allow them to be the experts. I'm just the reporter bringing in the experts. Yet think about all the people in the news. All they do is report of things that are happening. They don't talk about themselves, but they got millions of followers because they have the platform, because they're presenting the information. They're interviewing the people that are all famous. People all think they're a big deal. People think Napoleon Hill was a big deal. Dude, Napoleon Hill just went out there and interviewed all the freaking epic people and put it in Think and Grow Rich. Everyone thinks, man, this guy's a master. Homie, he just got people in and he grew his authority that way. And now he's respected all over the world, even after he dies. Probably greater than Pablo Picasso. Awesome. Uh, so Sean Dial, he's the next question that we have. And he says, what would you recommend for someone to do who is trying to get back into fitness? Okay. So question is, what would I recommend to someone who's looking to get fit? You know, it's interesting because I feel that most people would say something like show up to the gym and just commit to showing up, do a small workout, start doing push-ups and all these different things. And I probably would have given that answer a few months ago, but listening to all those gurus and all these smart people and all these people on the internet, I came to find out that that's total crock of shit. It's a total crock of shit. One of my great mentors, uh, he was actually, he spoke at BDB Live this last year. He's probably spoken at every BDB Live, actually. His name's Yost Jansen. And he came in and he dropped some fiery knowledge at this last event. The guys in our BDB club, if you have not seen it, you can watch all the recordings there for all of our live events. Yost Jansen. He came in and he says, your why doesn't matter. And I sat there and I'm like, dude, I don't know what this guy's talking about. Your why matters. Like, you need a why that makes you cry, right? This is what we get taught to do. So everyone thinks about the why, like, what's my why? I want to be there for my children. But you think of all the people out there that are out of shape, that are sick, that are broken, that have every reason why to do something, that never do it. They have all the whys in the world, but they never take action. They never quit smoking. They never quit drinking. Why is that? And it came down to the biggest shift that you can make right now, that you're going to want to make, is the identity shift of who you are. See, people that have a certain identity, they act a certain way. This is much like how people join BDB Club or BDB Elite, or the Brotherhood, and automatically they have an identity shift from the investment. They invest and they literally go, I feel different. I'm a different person. Sean, you went through that same thing. Like You were a different person when you invested. Why? Because you were like, this is who I am. This is the identity that I have. I remember sitting down with Russell Brunson and he was talking about a time actually where he, he bought a bicycle, like a $10,000 bike or something like that. Super expensive bike. It just sat in his garage. He never used it. And he used the term he wanted to be a biker. It's called a cyclist. 
bikers are like on Harley Davidson's. But anyway, for the sake of his story, he said, I want to be a biker. That's what I want to do. So what he did is instead of dipping his toe in and thinking, I'm going to go get a small bike and I'll just start fresh. And like, as I work my way up, I'll, I'll become a better biker. No, he decided I'm going to be a biker. So he went out there and he bought the spandex, he bought the shoes, he bought the helmet, and he just decided to immerse himself in the identity of being a biker, or as we would know, a cyclist. And then all of a sudden he started building up to five miles, 10 miles, 40 miles every single day until he was like, dude, I'm in this. Like the difference was, was that before he just had a gym membership, before he just had a bike, before he just had an idea, it just sounded good, yet he had not shifted his identity of who he was. And as soon as he put on the identity, as soon as he put on the suit, the Superman suit, as soon as he put on the Batman suit, that's when Batman became Batman. That's when Superman became Superman. That's when he put on the identity and was like, this is who I am. Think about Spider-Man. Spider-Man, when he had his suit on, he was Spider-Man. When he had that black suit on, he became someone completely different. He put on a different suit. So I would say, man, like freshen yourself up, create a new identity. Who are you? If you have a fit identity, you will not go out there and not be fit. You shift the identity and you'll shift the reality. So think about ways. How can I immerse myself and shift that reality? I wouldn't say it's from dipping your toes and I wouldn't say it's from showing up to the gym. I would say immerse yourself like a freaking athlete. Do something like 75 hard. I'm not big on these small little steps. I've noticed that all it does is create people that just get in a little bit of shape or consistently just keep getting out of shape. If you want to be average, great. Go be average. Take it step by step. If you want to be great, immerse yourself. Get really sore. Start eating clean. Do it all at once. Shift the identity of who you are. Don't just get a why. That's the way that you're going to shift yourself in the health and fitness. If you're just getting started, no better place than immerse yourself. The only thing I'd add on top of that is that you are who you surround yourself with. It's really difficult when everyone's eating crap for you to eat healthy. You still should do it, yet it's a lot harder. If you find that one friend that's fit, if you find that one friend that eats healthy, you find that one friend that does well, is really in shape, they usually have friends that are in shape as well. So with that, it's like if their friends are in shape, if you just meet that one guy, he's going to introduce you to the other people. So I actually break this down also inside the Modern Day Businessman. Uh, you can actually get the audiobook right now on um, on Audible. You get the audiobook on Audible. You can also download the book for free at nicholasbarely.com slash ebook. Inside of there, I actually break down the five, the five um, core functions of health. They're called five physical attributes. Inside of them, I break down breath. I break down hydration. I break down sleep. I break down nutrition. I break down exercise. And I break down the different forms of it that I like. Also, Sean, I actually have workouts inside the B2B club that people invested $7,500 to have. I actually put them all inside the BDB club from a 15 day ab challenge to a 90 day program that's tailored. It's freaking amazing. It's like 270 days of workouts. Really amazing. So uh, grab the book. Obviously, Sean, you have it. If people don't have it yet, nicholasbailey.com slash ebook or go to Audible and grab the audio version. I read my own book. That was super freaking difficult. It took forever. And so I answer those questions in there. I answer the things about being a three-dimensional businessman. I tell the stories of how I created this successful business and talk about the things that we just talked about here today. So I appreciate you guys so much for the open coaching Q&A for the Billion Dollar Brotherhood podcast. Again, if you have not gone over to the Billion Dollar Brotherhood Facebook group, you're going to want to do that. Thank you guys for the subscribes, the rates, the reviews, the shares. I really appreciate it. It means a ton to me. Launching a brand new show was not easy, but I just knew it was the right step. I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to invest in you. I'm grateful you've invested in us with your time, and I will see you on the next episode.